everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah Jane from Misunderstood. Now today I'm going to talk about pathological demand avoidance known as PDA. Now PDA is slowly and I mean very slowly becoming an accepted behaviour profile that is, is, is common in individuals with autism. PDA is the inability to cope with demands and a desperate need to stay in control. The demand avoidance is driven by anxiety. Now this isn't a new profile of autism. The PDA Society was formed in 1997. Now I joined the PDA Society in 2010. So I've studied this for over 10 years. Now people with anxiety disorders have intense excessive worry and fear that reaches a peak within minutes, causing panic attacks. Feeling anxious is very different from suffering from anxiety. Anxiousness is mostly triggered by something specific happening in your life. Those specific events bring on the anxiety. When you've made sense of the situation, the anxiety will fade once the event has passed. People with anxiety disorders are often anxious all the time, and the anxiety normally centers around an excessive and irrational fear. They simply can't get their body to listen to their brain. Now, PDA is taking these worries to another level that they need to control all social situations. It's a pervasive developmental disorder that often accompanies autism. People with PDA find it difficult to take responsibility for the things they do. They appear not to care about what they should do or shouldn't do. The central difficulty for people with PDA is their avoidance of everyday demands made by other people. They will obsessively resist ordinary demands like take your bag upstairs, go get a shower, go put your coat on. Even if they wanted to put their coat on, they would refuse because you've asked them to and that's a demand. They will find any reason possible to refuse, just to control their anxiety. They will distract you by changing the subject. They will make excuses. They will even say they have a broken leg. Now, traditional parenting techniques like sanctions will only increase the anxiety and escalate behaviour because you're controlling them. Now, their tolerance can vary day to day. The more anxious the person, the less likely they will tolerate the demand that's made. Now, let's have a look at some of the other characteristics of PDA. They can appear sociable but lack depth in understanding. They will use their sociability to manipulate others into doing what they want. They will happily play with others as long as they feel in complete control. Now manipulate is a very strong word to use. They have to manipulate the situation so they know exactly what is happening as it makes them feel safe. Like the young girl who had severe anxiety about leaving the house alone. She would be the one to make all the arrangements and manipulate her friends into these arrangements by arranging who would call for who, so she was always called for by someone. They're also comfortable in role play, but only if they're the person in charge, like a teacher in charge of a class, or a policeman arresting a thief, or the shopkeeper. They can have a language delay, being very passive, but unlike autism, they often have a great degree of catch-up. They can also have very strong obsessions, often focusing on people rather than things. They will want to see that person all the time, shower them in kindness. They will even turn up wherever they know they'll be, just to say hello. It's very important that people understand that PDA is anxiety driven. They need to be in control of themselves. They are not being defiant. I hope you've learned something new about autism and gained an understanding of pathological demand avoidance. And now any questions, then you can contact me on Facebook or my website. I'll put the details below. When you subscribe to my channel, make sure you press the bell to be notified of any new videos. Thank you. Bye.